Okay, so this would be a single pole switch right here, this one. Because there are two, only two ways of coming into that switch. Just like here. Kaboom, and kaboom. What's this one here? This would be a, how many ways switch? A three way switch. So here is one and two and a three ways to get into this switch. And one is going to be common and two. So here's going to be a common terminal right here. Yeah. And here are the something that's called traveler terminals. Mm -hmm. Just like the traveling from country to country, from place to place. Traveler terminals. And how does that translate into some sort of a graphics? One, two, three. And here is the paw. So single paw. So here is a single paw single throw switch or you can just say single paw switch this would be a one paw i guess single paw double throw switch you can throw this paw one way or the other one or the other way and one two three ways of getting at this switch and in electrical systems, uh, this would be called a common, and these two will be called travelers. That's in electrical installations. All right. So here's a three-way switch. And also there are four-way switches, but we're going to leave that for now. Because today we are talking about... Boxes and Devices Part 2. And by the way, the three-way switch uh, we are going to use in our last lab uh, in order to connect a three-way switch system. Um, you are probably familiar with the way of having two switches and one light source or one main light, light source. Uh, what does it say here, Jonathan, when installing a three-way switch, does the single third terminal have to be on facing up or down? Well, there are some common practices saying, and it's one of those slides, and this, there's actually an error in the slides that uh, I'm going to show you um, in this presentation. Some people like to have a common practice of having a line on the top and the load on the bottom when you're mounting that in the uh, in the box, but it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Boxes and devices part two, continuing. All right, so over here we have something that is called a single gang. Remember, a single gang, double gang. How can you tell already that this is a single gang uh, box? And you can say that this is not a metallic box. It is a uh, PVC or plastic box. All right, so what do we have here? We have the mounting terminals here. So you can, this part here, you can fasten to a stud all right and over here we have the kind of an inlet all right so that's a almost like a built-in connector so you can slide in the wire and the wire is going to be held so in this particular one you don't need to install any additional connectors and there are those kind of tongue and groove or those outputs or out uh, mm, uh, outers that uh, if you put that against the stud 
to those markings the distance between here and here all right that's half inch so that is going to accommodate for the drywall that goes on top of the stud what else can we see that that is characteristic to this single gang and you can tell that because there there is this is two inches here so you can tell now you should remember that it's two inches by three inches here the this dimension three inches is going to stay if it's the double gang but if it will be double gang it would be one and two of those kind of side by side this one is laying on its side right? Also, what can we see here is that there is inside, right here. Wow. Okay. Come on. There we go. The zoom sometimes is playing tricks on me. Uh, over here, you have a bonding terminal. And that bonding, ten, bonding terminal has a bonding screw, a screw terminal. We can have two screws just for your convenience. And that bonding terminal extends right to the faceplate mounting screw. In a way that if you, uh, if you have a metallic faceplate, that metallic faceplate is through this um, contact here, physical contact, is going to be bonded to the ground. And we need that because it's a PVC housing, so we need to have something to bring it out. So that's the way it is solved on the PVC boxes. How is the switch connected? Sometimes, sometimes on the switch, you are going to have three terminals on the two-way switch. One is going to be the active terminals here so to connect the line. So basically, when you flip the switch this way or that way, you're going to either join these two points or you're going to separate them electrically. And some of them are going to have a third bonding terminal. This one doesn't but it's still being bonded because this part here is a metallic part this housing here so when that part of you know when you use the mounting screw when that is connected to this part right here that means this whole thing is going to be bonded and if you have a faceplate to go on top here, it is going to be bonded if it's metallic and if it's a PVC or plastic faceplate then uh, it doesn't matter because plastic doesn't conduct electricity okay, okay. so all right let me just adjust the audio here because this is the time that somebody has decided to cut the grass so I have to turn the high filters on just to get rid of the um, okay I'm reading the uh, I went to the email link and I was in the three I was in there for 10 minutes alone Oh, really? Did I give you a wrong link? I hope not. All right, we got 90 people here, so hopefully everybody got the message, but I hope I gave you the right link. Uh, all right, I'll investigate that later. I'm not going to interrupt this lesson now here. All right. So let's see what we have. Okay, so this is a single bag, single gang plastic box. Plastic, single gang plastic box. All right. Now, this is an example of a four by 11 16, which is basically almost one inch deep 
Remember, the second, the last dimension is the depth of the box. And because it's a square box, we only need to give the one side dimension here, because we know if it's a square, then it's a square. Okay. All right. Stove and dryer receptacles. They remember I had, uh, I gave you the, uh, in the last um, lecture, we looked at some of the footprints for the uh, different uh, voltages outlets and different uh, receptacles and different uh, amperages or the different ampacity um, or current carrying capacity uh, outlets or receptacles. Uh, well, here is an example on the left. I'll give you two more of those. Uh, 50 amp wrench receptacle. Wrench is a stove, okay? So, so it's a stove outlet right here. Um, and this will take 50 amps, 220, okay? And uh, this, oh, this is the 30 amp dryer receptacle. So the dryer doesn't take, doesn't need as much as the stove. Of course, the stove needs more heat. Okay? All right, We're looking, keep looking at some of the boxes today. Octagon device box, all right? Four inch by inch and a half. Remember the octagon? We only need to have one side or the diameter here. If it were a circle, so that would be the diameter from the furthest to the furthest um, parallel sides. So that's a four inch by what? Inch and a half deep. And if we were using uh, 14 gauge conductors, this would accommodate 10 of those. Now this one here uh, on the side on the, the other dimensions on the right side here, they are giving us four inch again. That's a four inch here, and uh, this one is deeper because it's two and one eighth of an inch. So basically, it's four by two, right? Don't confuse that with two by four. So uh, this one here is an octagon box. Uh, and this would, con uh, this would accommodate 14, 14 gauge conductors. Next. All right, fixtures and hickeys. What does it say here? Ceiling fixtures often have what is called a hickey that attaches to the stud mounted in the ceiling box for hanging fixtures. This allows the weight of the fixture to be supported by the box and the stud and not the wires. Well, it's important because sometimes you are going to be mounting a, some heavy device such as a ceiling fan uh, and that uh, you don't want that to fall down uh, because of the movement and of the weight itself. So when you're mounting that device, if it's just a straight lamp holder that is supposed to hold a little tiny lamp holder, PVC kind of a, which we'll look at that um, uh, device uh, into which we're going to have a light bulb uh, mounted onto that, that doesn't weigh much, all right? So that uh, the drywall ceiling can support that. But if you have a heavier structure such as ceiling fan, it, the drywall mounting is not enough. The structure, the structure of this device has to be mounted to the structure, the permanent structure of the ceiling, whatever that is. Okay, and then based on that, there is going to be there are going to be devices that need to support the whole weight on that. So if you wonder what a hickey is, uh, uh, then that's the that's that's this part right here. All right, and the hickey has a stud and it has a nipple and it has wire nuts uh, or the wire connectors that are connecting the wires that support the light that are coming here. Remember those wires are not counted. Um, and uh, there are the supply wires here, the line uh, uh, wires. So this one here uh, would have a neutral white and a hot black. And then of course it will have somewhere in the background there. Maybe it's not, not drawn, but it will have to have the um, the bonding wire, right? Or a glass chandelier, yes. All right. Octagon. Here's an example of octagon, octagonal, octagonal, octagonal box wired 
or a lamp holder. What's a lamp holder? That is a lamp holder right here. It's a little thingy here, round, it is round, and it has the thread for a regular light bulb. Yeah. So that is called a lamp holder. It goes onto octagon box. So here uh, we would mount uh, the, we would connect, we would do the connections and you can see here, I wonder if I can zoom it nicely, better, a little bit better. All right, so what do we see here? We see three physical conductors, and this would be something like a 14-2, right? Because we don't count the bonding wire. So we have a neutral, which is white, and it goes to the neutral terminal on the lamp holder, which is the one that connects to the thread of the connector. Uh, and here is the hot terminal that connects to the middle hot terminal inside the uh, thread there. Uh, so that's the way it's connected. And we have a bonding wire connected to the bonding screw in the octagonal uh, box, device box. Now, if you notice, we don't have additional wire uh, conductor. We don't have one that's going from the box into the chassis of the lamp holder because the lamp holder, this particular one, is a plastic one. So plastic does not conduct electricity, so we are not going to need a bonding wire for that. Okay, now here is a lamp holder. Um, so here's the thread part of that right here. And here's the hot terminal. So this would be neutral, this would be the hot. And this is how we connect it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, quite often you're going to see that the neutral uh, terminal that is connected to the thread is going to have silver-ish looking uh, nickel kind of uh, screws. And these would be the brass screws. So the white neutral is brighter than the black hot, which is closer to the brass comparing to that. Hello, Jasper Fraser. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, now, uh, so that is how uh, we are connecting. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. We're connect. This is how we are connecting those uh, lamp holders, and we are going to connect that as our light source for our three-way switch after we do the pipe bending and box connecting and connecting the box offset into the two boxes. And uh, those two boxes will be with three, supplied with the three-way switches. And there's going to be a third box, which will be the octagonal box that is going to accommodate the lamp holder. All right. All right. <clears throat> now that's in here. Uh, all right. Just a common uh, type of practices, uh, and now we 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 need to know that uh, this is basically what we were talking about. And now you can just see this thing written down uh, if you want to. If you're more like a uh, visual type of person, uh, so wire connections to common devices. All right, duplex receptacle, for example, black or red conductor, which would be the hot ones, go to the brass screw. Um, and that is the one that is corresponding to the shorter, uh, is corresponding to the shorter uh, prong on the duplex receptacle. And white, which is neutral conductor to the silver screw, all right? Uninsulated bare conductor, bare copper to the box connection and the green screw. Also, the bonding wire would, uh, uh, you know, it could be a bare copper, or it could be a green jacketed wire, or sometimes you're going to see a green with like a yellow stripe around um, along its side. And so that would be the uh, grounding or bonding wires. For the lamp holder, uh, black, black, black or red conductor, which would be the hot ones, go to the brass screw brass screw and the weight conductor which is the neutral will terminate at the silver screw and the uninsulated bare conductor to the box connection only because of what we just said about, uh, one and a half minute ago 
All right. So wire connections. Uh, yeah, this is what somebody asked. Uh, uh, who was it that was asking that question here? Jonathan was asking that. Okay. Now, here's a slide that I inherited from uh, previous uh, professors. Now, here. Here's the error on this one. Single pole switch, which would be like this one here. Or this one here that is being mounted on the, in the box, okay? Then, there are so many buttons to press. Okay, so this is what it says here. Black conductor to the bottom connection, screw trade practice. See, this is like a trade practice. It's not like kind of a, it's not a code thing. The conductor is connected to the circuit breaker for the circuit live wire. Black or red to the top, see? So uh, I think this one here is supposed to be white instead of black, yeah? And black or red would be connecting to the uh, connection through the conductor is connected to the device being operated by the switch. So it's going to the load. All right. Uh, so this one here, you're coming into from the bottom and leaving through the top. If you do it another way, um, I don't think there should be a problem, uh, but you should see if there's anything that says in the code. Uh, I'm not teaching you code, so bag uh, Mr. Hamilton about that one. All right, but as far as I know, uh, this would be a common practice, but it is not. Uh, uh, it is not a um, something that is mandatory. Okay. Now differences between the switches right here. As we could see, see our hand. All right. So here is the single pole switch, which would be this one right here. Notice this one just has the connecting terminals, the active terminals, and there is nowhere on this one here that it has a bonding screw. This one does have a bonding screw. So sometimes you're going to see ones that do have bonding screws, and sometimes you're going to see ones without the bonding screws. But if you don't have one, this right here, this chassis of the switch, this housing, is going to make a physical contact with either the metallic box or that bonding terminal that extends um, inside the uh, plastic box. I sound a little muffled. I don't know why. Yeah, probably because I turned on some of the filters. Let me just, okay, they were cutting the grass. Now, they're not cutting the grass anymore, so I could turn the filter off. Does it sound a little bit better now? Um, I hope it does. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. So um, this one doesn't have it. And the way it would be connected to the, it would be bonded is because this part here would make a physical contact. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm not chalking on my tongue. Okay. Uh, on my tongue. There we go. All right, it's, you know, guys, all right, this is uh, almost Friday, all right? Actually, uh, you know, if you go by the motto, uh, you know, every day is almost Friday, then you get to have an easier life. Uh, that's my motto. Every day is almost Friday. Monday, almost Friday, all right? Uh, okay, so uh, this bonding would happen by physical contact by to the metallic box or to the bonding terminal that would be uh, extended inside the plastic box. All right. Now, um, so these would be the two terminal screws, and here's the bonding screw. All right. So, how many ways can we get into that switch right here? 
uh, one and two. So if you're really, really stubborn, technically you could call this thing a two-way switch, but usually this is called a single pulse switch. Now, uh, the game is being upped when we go to the more ways of a switch. Again, this one has a bonding terminal or a grounding screw. Uh, sometimes you don't have it because we just talked about it. Uh, and uh, here uh, are terminal screws. So here's a common and here's a traveler and here's a traveler. And we will talk about how things are being connected. Um, we're going to have a whole lesson. Actually, I do have a video made about that. Um, and we're basically going to recreate what I did in that video. Uh, when you're doing a three-way switch system. So uh, how many ways to get into the switch when it comes to the active wires? One, a two, a three, a uh, a. Uh. Okay, so it's a three-way switch. Over here, skip the, forget the bonding screw. Right? One, a two, a three, a four, a uh, a. Uh. Okay, so that is a four-way switch. Very simple. Right? Uh, in our class, we're going to use this switch and we're going to use this three-way switch. And in your next class, after you've gone through me, at that time, I will be teaching you the communications part. And uh, I think Mr. Hamilton is going to teach you the installation practices. You are going to use that one. So all the termination techniques that I'm giving you, please take it to the heart. To your heart if you need some additional way to practice let me know i'll help you with that you need to be very comfortable and very quick with proper termination techniques because you're going to deal with a little bit more complicated stuff i want you to be comfortable with the bread and butter which would be the termination stuff so you don't have to struggle with the termination while you have to think about more complicated things okay all right uh Wire connections to common devices. Here's the three-way switch. Now, this here, oops, <clears throat> excuse me, this here is just a classic example of a three-way switch. Here's a one light source and two three-way switches. One, two, and three. One, two, and three here, and then one, two, and three, okay, uh, plus the bonding. Now um, I will show you how to you I'll show you how to do it's a very very simple way of doing that uh, in, when it comes to three connect connecting a three-way switch you should be able to draw it out but it is actually so much simpler than what it looks like at, at first that I want you and I think you're going to be able to I'm pretty darn sure that you'll be able to there's no way that you won't you'll be able to connect that system without having to draw anything on the paper it is as simple as that right so there are different combinations there are two switches and you can control this light by either of the switch so this switch could be upstairs this switch could be downstairs and if you forget to turn the light off when you walk upstairs you can use the top switch to turn it off or turn it on independently okay so that's a pretty neat system here uh, now in this particular case the power is supplied to the light source and if you look at, okay you can look at this thing if you want but you know what um, don't 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 sweat too much over this particular diagram that I'm showing you although you can if you want uh, there's a different reason why I'm showing you. Why is the, Yeah, I'll show you that. I'll tell you that, Israel. Okay, thank you for noticing that. See, good eye, all right? I should call you the Israel, the hawk eye from, like, from Bash, okay? Anyways, uh, yeah, good sight, man. Uh, so I'll get to that in a second here. Uh, so the, uh, the, I'm pointing to, yeah, here's the drawing here. The power is supplied to the lamp hole there, right? to the light source, and then the switches are controlling the light. Also, the power could be supplied to this box, or the power could be supplied to this box, 
or the switch could be on this side and the lamp holder could be on that side and the power could be supplied here the power can be supplied anywhere and there's a nice and neat way of connecting an easy way of connecting those in any sort of combination that uh, that they throw at you now uh, there is a there's a certain amount of wires that is needed to uh, to connect those things like for example to this box on the far right you how many wires do you see going in there one a two a three yeah one two and three okay plus the uh, bonding wire yeah. so there are three wires going now sometimes you are not going to have enough wires to be considered as hot because when you see a white wire that should be a neutral wire however however in this case uh, all the wires uh, at some point can be hot depending on the position of this switch or the other switch so there is no sort of like a neutral wire per se in this case so this white wire is going to be used at some point it can become hot so in order to mark that is a marking thing so you can either mark it with a permanent marker but more common practice is to just to wrap around black tape around it to to actually tell whoever is going to open that device box uh, to see that this is not this is a white wire but it is not a neutral wire so it's just identifying the wire yes so that this, this is an identifier so when you see something like that it's not because somebody kind of wrapped the tape around it and forgot to remove it it's identifying it right as a possible hot wire which is going to be used as hot wire if you don't have enough wires or conductors in the cable uh, so sometimes in the conduits or pipes you're going to pull the uh, like a cable 14.3 or 14 yeah 14 14.3 uh, yes um, and one of them is going to be white or sometimes you're going to have conduits and you're going to pull individual conductors so of course you're going to try to avoid pulling a white wire in there right so that's uh, that's why yeah i was going to thank you for pointing it out i was going to mention that anyway so that's the black tape now this is from the old older um electrical code practices now and you're going to study that in the code now from I don't know when you're going to see this video uh, you can see this video five years from now so the some of the electrical code practices might be changed you know three more times who knows or not right uh, what's different right now is like for example here in this first box there is a neutral wire going into this box and only to this box it would not be accepted right now because today what you have to do it's 2021 what you have to do is you have to have a neutral wire in every box even if it's not used so in this case here you would have to pull additional wire right, in order to have a neutral wire in this box which would not be connected anywhere but it has to be there and it also it will have to have a neutral wire going into this box and it would not be used but it has to be there it's just the way it is right now okay. all right here is another connection here here's the first box here's the light source and here is the second box see here Here's the light source, first box and second box. Now you have a different combination here. Now we have a light source in the middle. All right. You can take a quick look at it uh, without having the, you know, it's also here, it, there's no neutral wire where it should be according to today's standards and practices. Um, but if you just analyze the active wires, you can analyze it a little bit. But as I said, do not sweat that too much. Do not try to go too heavy on this. Uh, try to figure it out. I will show you a nice and easy way when the time comes. 
All right. Uh, so over here, the power is supplied to the first box, and then the light is in the middle, and then there is this uh, second box. So there is certain type of connections, not much different. The idea of connecting things are is the same. Uh, is you just have to know what you're doing, and it's my job to show you. It's my job to give you enough information that you know what you're doing. And we will come to that when the time comes. All right. Common terminology, all right? Handy box. You probably see this thing all over the place. This is what a handy box is, and it's also used uh, called a utility box. Very common kind of a device, right? You can you can mount it as a surface mount, or you can mount it flush with the wall. Uh, yeah, it's called a handy box or utility box, and you could tell it's a single gang box. Is it a ganga ball box? No, it is not because you would have to physically cut the metal in order to join them, and you'll be modifying the already-made device, and we should not be doing that, right? So this is only to be used as a single gang box. All right, boxes and connectors. We will go over some of the connectors. Uh, so uh, this will be a compression connector here. This we would run a... Um, um, the, uh, armored cable through that one here. Actually, this one here you can run armor. No, this is this is the uh, NMD ninety. You can run into that. Uh, there's a set screw. There's a compression term uh, tab here that, uh, and this is a thread that goes into the box knockout right here. Those knockouts are filled, and you can just knock them out with a screwdriver uh, and needle nose pliers. And you can have the opening, and you can put that thread in. And then you can put a lock nut on the other side for that thing to be held. We will go over that during the lab. And you will mount those connectors onto the boxes. Here's another type of a connector. It's a PVC connector without any screws, without any set screws to tighten things up. It does have a nifty kind of flap here or a stopper, a uh, spring-loaded stopper. So you can put the wire, uh, well, you insert that uh, connector into the knockout and it snaps on. You squeeze that and once you put that in the knockout, you release, you release it and that is going to stay that. You don't need any additional screws. It is legal to use, right? It's, it, it mounts much quicker than this one here, <clears throat> All right? So uh, let me sit up straight here. Come on. Keep some fashion back. Uh, all right. Um, so uh, and you can and you can insert the uh, cable in one way, and the flap, the way the flap is designed, it's not going to let you pull out the wire unless you pry it with the slotted screwdriver, for example. All right. Uh, and here is an example of how this thing is being used. Box connectors, and is there any description with the description in that here? No. Here's the example of a oh come on there we go uh of uh, how those connectors would be used you cannot just uh, remove the knockouts and uh, insert the wires the wires have to be held by connectors either these here, these guys here depending on what kind of wire you're using and what kind of a box you're using or the plastic ones as well you can use those they're much quicker to install uh, and they're perfectly okay to use, um, then uh, this would be, uh, for example, the square box used as a junction box or a connection box. All right. Um, so this would be no, there will be no device mounted here, but you would just have, you, you would be using this thing as a junction box. And notice this will be metal studding. One thing you can notice is that the NMD90 wires, they are mounted or stapled uh, using um, uh, designated uh, staples or specially designed staples for that, or proper staples. Uh, they are mounted straight onto the wood, non-metallic surface. You cannot mount this NMD90 cable onto a metal. If it's a metal, then you put a wood 
on top of the metal studding and then you can fasten or staple this, uh, this, these cables here. Or you can put them into a metallic tubing or plastic tubing if it is a metal structure or a steel structure. All right, so yeah, 300 millimeters of the box. Yeah, there's those staples here. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, <clears throat> there are different connectors here. So here's a connector that would accommodate a EMT, which is called electric met electrical metallic tubing, which is a pipe, right? a conduit. So this part here would go onto the knockout of the box right here. And there's a set screw that once you put this metallic tubing inside that uh, opening here, you can, you can fasten that metallic tubing. This one here is a coupler. Right? If you have a longer distance that you need to run the, wire, the, run the metallic tubing over a longer distance, uh, usually those metallic tubings are being sold in 10 foot sections, but what if you have 50 feet of wire to pull, uh, then you would have to use about five of those, and this is how you couple them. This, it's a joiner, right? It's for, to join two metallic tubing pieces. Right? And here is a, uh, uh, here's a bracket to mount the square box. So different uh, devices require different mountings, different situations require different mountings. So this, this is how a metallic, uh, if it's a steel stud, if there are steel studs, there's a bracket to actually wrap around uh, uh, the, the steel studs. Right? Also, there would be box offset conduits. Uh, I want to stop with the box. I, I want to kind of stop a while here. Look at this, um, this picture right here, the bottom left. You can see that the knockout hole, these knockouts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example, on this one here, they are not flush with the bottom of this device box. So if you are running a metallic tubing, you would force that from here onto this opening and it would just look ugly. All right. So what happens is that you can use a pipe bender and make something that is called the offset band, all right? box offset band that would accommodate the the difference between the uh, the bottom of the uh, device box and where the opening is or the knockout is. So now this pipe is nicely running parallel to whatever surface is mounting on, mounted on and it's nicely and neatly offset bent uh, to accommodate the, uh, the height of the knockout. All right. We are going to make an offset band to accommodate two boxes. We're going to make a box offset. We're going to make a, a section of a conduit, metallic conduit, EMT, electrical metallic conduit, to accommodate two boxes. Right. So you're going to have to do a box offset on one end and nice and straight do another box offset on the other end so you could nicely put those boxes together to join them with the metallic tubing right? otherwise this metallic tubing would just extend on top of the um, mm, well, it's not going to be attached to the whatever surface, and there are some offsets uh, mounts if you want to uh, to get to do that one that way, or you can use a straight pipe or straight conduit and use a box offset connector. That is also possible to do. See, this opening here is flush with the bottom, so you don't have to do any pipe bending. You could just insert the box offset connector. See, things are made easy for you, or so you think. <laughs> Four-inch square box metal stud connection. We just saw that one uh, a few seconds ago, so I'm not going to go too much on that. Now, this is a picture of our lab, 
we have a lot of those uh, metallic tubing and raceways installed so next time you are um, next time you are in the um, in our lab take a look around and familiarize yourself take a closer look you know touch it uh, I can't say experiment with that but analyze it a little bit uh, and uh, uh, in our class we're going to only make a box offset a couple of box offsets and we are going to connect the the three-way system three-way switch system to uh, to accommodate one light bulb and with two switches uh, and in the next class after that you're going to uh, connect the four-way switch system all right so we're going to have more than two switches uh, controlling the same light bulb all right Okay, and this was the last slide. So 2.47, you have 15 minutes to go to the next class. Um, what else can I tell you today? Um, <laughs> um, as you noticed that you have a uh, test that is going to be triggered at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Anyway, it's going to be triggered tonight. All right? And you're going to have, I think, five days to do it. Take a take a look at the uh, what I wrote because I wrote it yesterday, so uh, I may not, <laughs> not remember what I wrote yesterday today. All right. So uh, the test is. Uh, please do the test. The test is going to be closing on twentieth uh, October twentieth because I have to give you the midterm marks by 22nd. Uh, so that's going to give me one day to analyze uh, or do the uh, whatever magic I have to do uh, <clears throat> with, uh, with the midterm marks uh, for your class and uh, for a couple other classes as well. All right, so um, it's same as the quiz, except there are more questions. And uh, what else? More questions. And it is worth more. The quiz was only 10 questions and it's worth only 5% of the course, the whole course weight. But remember, I told you, don't underestimate that for a couple reasons. One is that uh, some of the questions are going to be repeated on the test, so you have to learn them anyways, and on the test they're worth more, right? Um, rightfully so, because you have enough exposure to the content, then yes, I can assign more marks to the same questions because you should know that by now. Right? Plus the test is going to have 25 questions and it's going to be worth 15% of the whole, uh, 15, 1.5% of the whole course. Right? And it's the same idea as the quiz. It's an open book, uh, you have unlimited time to write it, you should do it by yourself. And the second reason for that you should not ignore those questions is forget the marks. Forget that, it, that that thing is worth 5%. Forget that this thing is worth 15%. Forget all the statistics that have to do with the markings. Learn the concepts, learn the ideas. There's a reason why we are giving you those things. It is because when you leave this school and you're going to find yourself in a situation that you need to apply this knowledge, you need to have that knowledge with you, right? Forget the marks. The idea is for you not to get good marks. It's a good idea to get good marks. It reflects of what reflect what reflects what you know. But even the more important reason is that so you know how to do your job when you go to work. All right, simple as that. Right. Uh, yeah, it is open book. Same idea as uh, as that. But do it yourself. You can consult anyone you want. You can talk with each other. Uh, my idea is that you are learning while you are doing this thing, this thing, and as soon as after the whole all the bunch of motions you go through that, and if what is supposed to stay in your head does stay in your head, then I have done my job. All right? Cool. Now there are some a uh, couple of people contacted me about analyzing their tests. Uh, uh, let's wait until the end of the test and then we're going to analyze those questions. Uh, we can do a group session or we could do one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, if you're interested about what you have done wrong in the test, send me an email and we're, we will deal with that that way. Okay. Cool, alright, so 10 to 3 
and I can almost start my weekend. Not yet. Well, I have to teach on the weekend, so I can't. So my weekend starts sun Saturday night. Uh, and your weekend almost starts now. Uh, what else can I tell you? Well, don't do drugs, stay in school, be safe, and uh, don't eat the yellow snow or something like that. Uh, it's not snowing yet. Guys, have a, have a good weekend, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.